forward to race number one and round three of this year's Aussie Racing Car Series. Dave Russell's alongside me for this one. We saw a great qualifying session yesterday. And 13 drivers get their best qualifying result of the year. Yeah, they did. They were putting it all on the line towards the end of that session yesterday afternoon. And tyres was the hot topic. But the biggest one uh, was, was the guys really just putting their three sectors together to try and get that good lap. And uh, obviously, uh, James Duckworth did a great job yesterday. Broke the track record from 2014. It's only the second time the Aussie Racing Cars have been here. And during the week, I scrolled through and looked at the races from the previous time here. And we're in for a real treat around here because it's not the widest racetrack in the world, even for these guys. No, it's not. I, I, uh, I'd be disappointed if I didn't see them go three wide somewhere. <laughs> but really good shot there as the cars come past. Look at all the marbles. They've, there's been GT cars. There's been the drift cars. There's been the monster trucks that have come out, so a lot of debris on the circuit, a lot of rubber. So James Duckworth starts from pole position, looks like Craig Woodskell Tresseter will start from the second row. Travis Sharp, local racer, jumps into the Ben Walsh number two car this weekend. Reese Chapman and Jay Robson, back to Blake Skibberis, down to Kent Quinn, and 17-year-old Alexander Barbouts, the local racer from here. Ian Shivers starts on the next row, back to Jeff Waters. Bill Hines is back behind the wheel of car number 57. We saw him in the stadium trucks, and back to the bowlers, Ruth and Lee, wrapping up the back of the grid. Let's go down the pit lane and say hello to Cam. Yeah, a couple of very quick updates, guys. Grant Thompson had an engine change since qualifying. Stevenson didn't alternate it, which is why he's a little bit further back. Blake Skiberis only got two laps in because of a fuel pump that, uh, that went awry. And a little update for Kel Tresseter. He's rolling the dice and is the only driver trying with green tyres out there for this race. OK, we'll keep an eye on him. His pole position streak came to an end. <laughs> I'm confused. Some are saying, ah, oh, you've got to run old tyres that, are, that have uh, got the edge with smaller tread blocks. Some are going for the new tyres. <laughs> I think it was Kent Quinn yesterday yeah. that was, uh, you know, throwing a curveball saying, hey, I'm running new tyres. But um, we shall see. We shall see in about 12 laps' time. They're on their formation lap right now. So four races across the weekend here at Barbagallo Raceway. Another race to wrap up this afternoon. Tomorrow, we invert the top 15 from the overall points of the weekend start him in the middle and I always love that Sunday morning race particularly at Simmons Plains where we're virtually underwater. Absolutely and look it's going to be action packed the guys that are going to be at the back of that inversion are, are going to be really firing hard in those first opening laps to make some spots so you see the guys warming their tyres doing little burnouts if you like trying to get some heat into those rear tyres which is very important for your launch off the line. So cars come into position there is Charlotte pointing one of the three lady racers in the field. Ruth Bowler starting towards the back of the field and Emma Clark starting out of 21st position. It's a magnificent day here in Western Australia. We had some cloud yesterday early in the day, but brightening up to be at least 26 to 27 degrees. Hard to believe we're getting those sort of temperatures still here in Perth this time of the year. Yeah, I think it's going to uh, wreak a bit of havoc on uh, some of the drivers, mm. tyres, cars, the temperature. Some wouldn't have expected it to be so warm, but yeah. the conditions are beautiful for, for racing this weekend. So here we go, getting set. The revs are coming up. The green flag waves at the back of the field. And we are set for race number one, 12 laps. So they bring them up to around 11,000 RPM. And get set to let them loose. Watch for turn number one. Watch everybody funnel their way through to turn number five. And we are underway for race number one of round three of the Aussie Racing Car Super Steering Series. And Woods gets the better start. And look at Kel Tresseter. On the outside, both got a good run. Uh, Woods was very, very quick off the line. It was instantaneous. You can see Duckworth just got a got a uh, bit of a tardy start there. So he'll be he'll be um, disappointed with that. But he's got to put his head down and press on now. Michael Rinkin got caught up in the turn one skirmish. He drops his way towards the back of the field. It's up to the top of turn number five and a drop down to turn six. We jump on board with your defending Aussie Racing Car Super Series champion James Duckworth as he used the slipstream down to Con's corner of the basin here on lap one. He's, uh, he's trying to make some passes early, and we're going to remember that Woods' time was only just a very small margin out. So these th top three cars are very, very close in time. So the slipstream and the pace at the start of the race, we're going to see a, a heated battle. We'll see if those new Kumo tyres will work for Tresseter as he lunges down the inside and puts the cart centre perp entry to the lead as they come through to complete lap number one. Great pass. He's had a dive there. He, he was um, very direct in that too. Like it was, it was a really good move. But you can see that uh, that run out is compromised and Woods is back up the inside. Great move. And this will go on the whole race, <laughs> you'd think, right? It should be passing points or lead points like you see in NASCAR in the States, perhaps, across the top of the little flip-flop. And then the, the line, just a really hard corner to get right, isn't it? It is. It's um, 
it, especially in these cars, you, you've got multiple sort of lines, if you like, because you can take a wider entry for that turn four to really open up that exit, because you don't realise, unless you're here at the track, it, it's quite up, yeah. uh, uphill um, battle to try and get it up and out of that turn four. Tressing it down the inside. What I love about this corner is if you're Craig Woods and you can hang on top, you'll set yourself up for a nice drag race plunging down the hill. We'll watch it from James Duckworth. He'll see which one's going to play chicken first when we get down to turn number seven. He's got the slipstream. He might make this three wide. He's going to make this three wide. <laughs> oh, I'm watching going, go, get in there. <laughs> but, uh, look, he's, he's held out. It's obviously very early days in the race. As, uh, as you see, Craig Woods just gets an awkward bounce. I wouldn't want to be hitting that outside curb too hard no. in one of these cars because they're so stiffly sprung. Look at this front group. Jay Robson joined the back of car number one. And now another car joined the mix in Travis Sharp. Replay of the start. This might tell us what happened to Michael Rinkin as he lit up the Kumo tyres. Well, more than lit it up. He's had a tyre rubbing. It's a tyre rubbing two. on the guard. And that's not even off. Oh, oh he's that's, been hit. That's not nice. No. That's, um, yeah, I think that'll get investigated uh, post, uh, post race. You can't, coming up the inside like that, you can see he was going a bit slower, so he's gone for a dive and yeah, it hasn't quite worked out. I didn't see who was up the inside there. Oh, one of the red cars. This is Reece Chapman, probably went one gear back too hard and got himself almost a box full of neutrals. Well, I know these things rev, but... It, that's that, too much. <laughs> that's way too much. That's in painful land. Replay at the start. Woods got the better start, albeit on the racing side of the yep. track. And it makes a difference being on that left side at the start. Is, uh, is definitely an advantage there. So we're talking about Kel Tressida's new tyres. So far, um, they're looking the goods as he's trying to make another move on Craig Woods now. Nobody wants to lead this race at the moment. I think it'll be <laughs> second or third at the moment. And now Jay Robson sits in that position. He's ahead of Duckworth. Brand new Camaro body on the RDA brakes. Number one car sitting back in fourth position. But it's Woods yet to get a pole position this year. But man, he's been tough in the races. He's doing a great job. He's, he's um, saying, all right, if... If you guys don't want to lead this, I'm going to put my head down and see. And he is. He's just doing some really tidy laps. He hasn't put a foot wrong so far. So if he gets his head down and if he can shake him out of the toe or get a little bit of a little bit of a lead on him, he might just get them out of the draft. Going on the numbers, he's finished third twice in the championship, second last year, and aiming to win the series. But man, oh man, is there some names there looking to take the number one off this guy? We're right on board with James Duckworth plunging down the hill to turn seven where you actually break uphill. Yeah, it is, and it's a very, very hard braking zone there. Because you're going uphill, you can afford to just put that little bit of extra brake pressure into it. You're watching from the onboard. I thought Tressida was pushing Woods up onto the curb. He has to go on defensive now because Robson has a whole head of steam with Duckworth pushing him along. And now Blake Skipper is biased at the back of this group. Robson's showing some good pace here. He's done some good sectors at the moment. He's very, very quick in that first sector. So that run up out of turn one, two, three, through into turn four as we're coming up on board now. It's the way he's going to be patient with the throttle. You do. Trying to keep the car turning, turning, turning. Well, it's a very flowing circuit. You must make sure in a, in a car like this, you're coming down into the bowl as you go through Con's corner. It's about making sure you get a really good run out. That's Emma Clark that spun down the bottom here into turn number one. So the last bar, number 15, has spun around and lucky there's a concrete hard stand yeah. because back in the day that used to be quicksand. Well, lost on her oh, own. Just locked her ears on the way in by the looks of that. Had a spin. She would not want to have gone back an inch because no she would have ended up in the sand. Not in one of these cars anyway. Down the inside now. Goes sharp on the inside. So gets himself up in to fourth position. But it's not done with. I've been very impressed with Jay Robson this year. A star in the making. Three race wins at Simmons Plains. And that's Duckworth. Give him the don't argue down at the turn number one. Yeah, he's, um, he's under a bit of pressure at the moment, so I don't know whether he started this race with some lower tyre pressures or he just does, doesn't seem to have the outright pace of the cars in front. You see he's dropped off that little bit. Although he's in a battle, of, uh, he's, he is dropping back that little bit. I would have expected him to be right on the tail of, of Robson in front and trying to get onto the back of Tressida. And a slight tyre pre pressure adjustment can make a big difference in these cars. Absolutely. That, Essentially, the tyre pressure is part of the suspension, the spring rate, if you like, of the car, and a small adjustment, even one PSI in these cars, you can feel the difference. It has the final say when you turn into a corner. So Duckworth pulls out alongside Travis Sharp, trying to get the side draft going down towards turn seven.
Chapman up the inside. Good move. Good pass. What about two onboard cameras? He took a while to get that done, but he got it done in the end. No, he did a good job, and I did say a few laps ago, look out for Craig Woods. He's going to put his head down and get a gap, and that's exactly what he's trying to do at the moment. If he can continue that, the other guys aren't going to be able to slipstream him on the straight. If he can achieve that in the early stage of this race and put it all together, I think he's going to get that win. Is Ken Quinn getting it all wrong down in the base? <laughs> oh, and straightens himself up. Nice effort. 10 maybe, out of 10. Maybe he had one of uh, some tips off those drift boys yeah. around here earlier today. They were doing a great job. It's a massive show, wasn't it? Here's Duckworth. I got him now. I couldn't see for all the smoke, though, to be honest. Incredible. There was that much tyre smoke. Part of the on-track entertainment in between our sessions here at the Perth Super Sprint. There's a great crowd and it continues to fill up the grandstands here at Barbagello Raceway. It's a great vibe around the paddock. It's one of the historical rounds of the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship. And the Aussie racing cars turning on the action as they do at all the tracks around Australia. Duckworth at the moment, he's set the fastest lap of the race. We're talking about tyre pressures. I guarantee that he set them lower and he's going to come on strong at the end of the race. No point being the hero on lap number one. Save that for lap number 12. So you settle down into a bit of a rhythm at the front. It's Woods, Tressida, Robson, Duckworth. This is the battle you're watching right now. Then it's Blake Skibberis, Rhys Chapman, Travis Sharp, back to Stevenson and 17-year-old Alex Barbaus. Impressive inside the top 10 on debut. He's doing a great job and... and one thing that you, you look for out of this, this battle pack, if you like, the top 10 cars are literally separated by less than a second. Let's go for a full lap around this very short but very quick Barbagallo Raceway. Oh, a big move down the inside at Con's Corner. Great job. If he can get back on the gas, which he's done very, very well, he's going to carry that speed. But you look at the car ranging up at the back there. He's going to get... The Robson's going to get that slipstream duck to the inside. What would you do in this situation? Oh, no, Ken Quinn has gone over this time in turn number six. So he got it sideways last lap, and this time he's rolled over the 100 car. That's a nasty rollover. You can see him moving inside the car there. He's he's just holding onto his belts there at the moment. Ken would, Kent would, uh, would definitely be shaken up right now. We just caught the tail end of it, and the car disintegrating around it, which is designed to do. The roll cage will protect him. Here's the replay coming down towards turn number six. Oh. You see the rear, he, the rears are locked there at his first whack on the brake there. As soon as you get in sideways into those very soft sand traps and unfortunately for Kent, it looks like he's okay in there, but that car is, uh, the, the panels have, have definitely just, uh, as Tony Quinn there, is, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure what he's doing. He's taking a photo of his finger with a... Oh, he's a character, isn't he? I'll tell you what. He's out of the car and actually putting his car back together as much as he can. Oh, so he's recording that on his phone. When he's a show, character. When he gets back to the pit saying, see what he did there? That was yeah. wrong. <laughs> maybe Kent has said to Tony after a few accidents here and there, Dad, this is what you did wrong, so maybe it's a chance to get back, but... Great to see Kent's okay. He's jumped out. He's obviously a bit a bit shaken and stirred at the moment. It's it's never nice having a situation where you roll the car over. So you see now he's he's disconnected his his hands device, and that is one thing that um, would have definitely helped him in in a scenario like that. Because um, yeah, the impacts and the and the forces on the driver can can be quite quite heavy in in some of those instances. For the viewers at home, tell us what it's like to have a hands device on. Yeah, look, it's. Um, if, if, uh, if you think about having that sort of apparatus around over the top of the shoulders, with that attached to your, to your helmet, um, you, you're tethered almost. When the harness goes over the top, the shoulder straps come over, you pull them down nice and tight, and it's connecting really your shoulders so there's no hyperextension hyper of the neck, and it's a, a great um, innovation in, in safety for, for us drivers, that's for sure. certainly been a great innovation over the years. The safety car is out. Let's head down to have a look at the replay of what happened to Kent Quinn on the run down to Turn 6. It looks like... Um, I don't know whether he was half thinking about making a move up the inside. He's maybe lost his brake um, marker and bearing there, but um, he's definitely put a lot of brake pressure in there, locked the rears. So his brake bias more so proportioned to the rear. He's locked the rears and, uh, yeah, unfortunately, if he'd gone straight on into the sand trap, he probably wouldn't have rolled over. But that's not what you're thinking about in that yeah. stage, are you? You're trying to pull it up. Happens so quickly, doesn't it? It yeah. does. Most of the time you try and back it in, but you don't have control of the car. It controls you in that situation. Exactly right. And it's, it's a downhill run, so, you know, 
what he would be focusing on when he locked up those rears is he was trying to get off it and then uh, at that stage he'd realise, hey, I'm in a bit of trouble and he stayed on the brake pedal. So staying on, they've spun around, going in sideways into that sand trap and as we've seen over the years, um, in that bottom sand trap at Con's Corner, if you go in sideways, you're going to roll it over. It's even worse when it's wet. We're not going to see that today here at Barbagallo Raceway. The Vodafone safety car continues to lead this field around. It's Woods from Tresseter, Duckworth, Robson, Skibberus, Chapman. Back to Sharp, Stevenson, Barb out to ninth. And Tucker completing your top ten in race one of the Aussie racing cars here today. So much to come. Qualifying for the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship. The Australian GT Championship is here today too in the Stadium Super Trucks who just tore up the track a few moments ago. They certainly did. And those, um, oh, it, it'd be an incredible feeling jumping up getting up that, that air time as they get over the jumps. Um, someone said to me, would I have a go? But <laughs> I was going to ask you that. Is that a David Russell category? Oh, look, I'd give anything a shot because I'm <laughs> mad enough. But, um, yeah, it would... Uh, seeing some of the accidents there, obviously all the guys are OK, but there's um, the the percentage of, um, of risk in, in uh, some of those races is a bit higher with what I do, that's for sure. That's a great shot looking down towards turn number six. And television obviously doesn't give you the justice of how far this track goes up and down but this is a real good shot of how it plunges down into the basin yeah it's a it, it's a, a a real um it's a funny feeling going down because you sort of get really get drawn in you don't realize the bowl looks a, a, a lot smaller mm. um when you're in the car yeah. if, if you if you just turn in a little bit too early or too late um you can get it all wrong so you have to be really really precise with where your braking marker is if you stay out too wide, all the marbles on the outside, you're never going to get back into that apex. So it's really, really important to make sure you can brake the car, go a lot slower in, and really get that run out. This is from the lap prior. He was off the racing line there, but which is why he comes back in the inside? He clips the kerb. I can't help but think that maybe Kent had a problem there. You, you saw he had a he, he had a problem, so maybe he's uh, he's um, had something break in the rear mm. of the car. Talking about. Um, having something in the suspension that's softened off or it just yeah it does look weird that he's had that issue before maybe he felt the car was doing it to avoid hitting the back of the brendan tucker number four car soft rollover eventually into that sand so he'll, yeah. he'll be fine a little bit sore later on today i was just looking uh the last year's race winner here has uh sent me a message and said you better do a good job on the commentary dave so <laughs> hopefully uh, i am trent young so <laughs> I'm sure he, he uh, would, would love to be here and, yeah, hope, hope he's back in the category sometime this year because, you know, he's definitely, um, he's definitely a championship contender if he gets back in. Yeah, we know we see that name on the entry list. There's going to be some race wins in there. He's very hard to beat in this championship. We've seen some good names over this. Paul Kamal was very, very good yep. in the days as well in Aussie racing cars. So we're looking to get a one-lap screamer. I still don't know what that term means, but either way, it's going to be 2.4 kilometres of excitement in race number one of the Aussie racing cars here at Barbagallo Raceway. And look, what Craig has to do is control the restart so that he can be... Oh, <laughs> he can be trigger-happy on the throttle, ready to go to yeah. get the jump. If he can get the jump, he can get the job done. What he doesn't want is to make a mistake on that first lap get the guys on behind him to draw them in for that last lap lunge at the last corner. So let's see if we can do it. So going back into the formation and our hopes have been deflated because it's uh, going to be <laughs> virtually a 50 metre run out of the corner. They go back into formation and time is going to beat us here in race number one of the Aussie racing cars and Craig Woods is going to break through for a win which is good to see the Western Sydney Motorsport team, of which there's at least five cars, and most of them are inside the top ten right now. Well, he should have the arm out the window already. He should be celebrating. <laughs> He's got to get on the gas, but they're, they're taking it to the checkers, so... The shortest restart you'll see at a racetrack, and that's how they'll end with Woods, Tresseter and Duckworth getting the top three. Well done to Craig Woods. He, he did a good job. Oh, We've got a couple still of on. spins after the... The Virgin Australia sign's been taken out um, over the line, so... Oh, dear. <laughs> Michael Rinkin for the second time. He's got the box set now. He got the inside right at the start of the race, and now the outside, the old pit exit. Poor guy. I don't know if it was his fault, no. so I'm not going to... Everybody's stacking up. Yeah. <laughs>
There is the results nonetheless. Craig Woods picks up the win in race number one in round three of this year's series. Cal Tress in a second, James Duckworth in third. Back to Robson, Lake Skibberis, Reese Chapman, Stevenson, Travis Sharp in eighth place. Back to Alex Barbouts in tenth. Thompson pointing the first three lady races back in twelfth position. Down to Sam Chester, Michael Rinkin, Bill Hines, the American in nineteenth, and Ruth Bowler completing the top twenty.